And finally, we'll have Diana Gronawagen, who's in Melbourne and is Director of Research Infrastructure at Monash University. So three terrific speakers today. Okay, so some of what I'm going to say, I guess, is not going to be a million miles from what you've already heard, but that's good. It's always good to be consistent. We'll start, I guess, a bit about how I got to where I am, and because and I'm old and have been doing this for a long time, I, um, I'm not going to tell you every job title I've ever had or every uh, <laughs> every role I've played. Um, I was doing some math during this, and I think this is the 14th desk I've had in the time I've worked at Monash. Um, so, uh, and I really couldn't even tell you every, every title I've had without thinking about it for a while. Anyway, I started off in life with a master's degree in history. Um, you can see from my awesome thesis title there that uh, it was a, 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 a very practical career-oriented master's degree. And about 20 odd years ago, I got a three-month fill-in job as a loans person in, the, in one of our branch libraries. Um, eventually got a degree in or a diploma in uh, information management and have consequently worked in lots of different bits of Monash University's library and uh, also worked at the University of Ballarat uh, for a while. I guess I would reiterate really strongly the point that, that uh, both Philippa and Kathy have made that um, projects are a fantastic way of, of moving out into different bits of the, of the world and finding out different things you can do and learning new skills. These are four of the project, five of the projects that I've worked at uh, while still being a Monash uh, employee over the years, and uh, in every one of those, um, I started off thinking I'm never going to know what's going on here, and there's a whole lot to learn. And in every one of them, uh, eventually, uh, you get the hang of it, and and you move on with your life. And uh, <coughs> full disclosure for those of you who aren't aware, I did used to work for uh, the Australian National Data Service as uh, as one of its directors. But about 18 months ago. Um, I uh, got a role in the in Monash University's library where I'm, I'm uh, the director of research infrastructure, as mentioned before, and uh, my role is is really about enhancing and developing the way we work with researchers, and to try and better enable them to do what they do well, um, and make it easier for them to do what they do well. So I thought uh, it would would it be a bad idea to actually. Uh, Try and define what a data librarian is because it's uh, it's an interesting uh, thing, um, and you know both Kathy and Philip have alluded to the fact that it's it's a changing thing. Um, I will uh, subtly hint that we're actually advertising for one at Monash at the moment to work on an ANS funded project. So uh, you know, go to jobs.monash if you're interested. We're uh, we're certainly uh, looking for for people to be involved in that. Um, but the role itself isn't. Even though we've got a job advertised called data librarian, uh, it's not a terribly clearly defined uh, role in, in the broader scheme of things. I mean, we know what we want to do with that particular project. Um, but what I've been thinking of this role as being, and what I've been thinking of the data librarian as being, is a, is, is a person who uses the, the traditional skills and strengths of the librarian to enable research to do more than data management, because data management is, is sort of where we started with this, but actually to share their research outputs, to publish it um, those widely, to preserve their outputs. And librarians bring a whole lot of skills that, that will help researchers to do that. And I'll you know talk about those a bit more as, as we go on. And sometimes we're asked, why librarians? Why should librarians be part of this? Um, you know, this is a this is an interesting and ongoing struggle, I guess, in a university. A lot of people think of libraries as being, uh, you know, the place where books go to die and students go to get out of the weather. And that's a that's a real challenge for us. Uh, and, you know, we have to keep saying to people, well, why are librarians part of this? I think we are actually wanting to be part of this, this changing world that the librarians I know, you know, see that there's a, a different future ahead and we need to do that. The library often has really good relationships with the researchers and the faculty, with the people who support them, and with other parts of the university. You know, we, we cross over a large part of the function of the university and work with lots of different people. And those relationships are really important. And, and you know, Kathy in particular spoke about that earlier, that those relationships with your technology services people, a relationship with your e-research office, with your research office, those are really critical to being able to make it more seamless for researchers. I think librarians have a really good 
reputation for trust that you know most researchers who I talk with they may not necessarily think we do the coolest things but they certainly trust us to do what we do and do it well I think we have a lot of transferable knowledge and skills um, you know a reference interview uh, which you know most of us learnt at library school um, is actually a really important skill uh, no matter what you're talking to researchers about we understand metadata a lot better than most people do in the university we've been dealing with copyright and IP for a lot longer than most people in the university and libraries have also been uh, a center for activities around scholarly communication anyway uh, you know we've been pushing the open access thing for quite a few years and we have actually done a lot of thinking about the issues around well how do you communicate research effectively how do you look after that research output effectively so these are some broader level skills and you know I, I both Kathy and Philip had lots of really nice lists of, of more skills than this and uh, and you know these are because I'm, I'm a director I get to be high level but the things that I think we need to be able to do effectively to, to, to make the data of librarian role work is, is to enable the researchers to do what they what they need to do to help them with the basics around the tool, the what they need to think about in terms of research data management what are all the elements around research that they often know but they don't always connect so how does ethics how does your ethics application fit in with your ability to publish your research data later on is a really good example of that uh, often ethics tends to err on the side of caution where people will say okay well we need to protect this for five years or ten years and then delete it all so that no one can ever do something bad with it which is fine in some level but bad in others where you don't get that opportunity to share we need to think about the f about how we can help them to find the tools that the researchers can use without necessarily having to be expert in all of those tools um, but helping them to be aware of the things that we can, we've got and the things that we can do be it a metadata store or a, a registry or your institutional repository or whatever it is and being tools that might be offered by other bits of the university and that's where referring comes in and that idea of, of being able to help to understand that what people what the, the needs of the researchers are and being able to refer them to other places when you need to be and um, you know someone described this to me really nicely recently we say well as librarians we've been very used to saying in the past that's a hard question you're asking I think I understand the question and I'm going to need to go away and find more information for you to answer that question you know we accept that we don't always know the answer the answer to a whole reference question straight away because some of them are complicated working with research data and working with researchers is the same thing it's about how do we understand the question and understand where we can send people to get an answer to that question or the tools that will allow them to answer it and the other school skill is one that we've always had as libraries which is about how do we describe this stuff so that other people can find it and how do we organize it so that people can find it um, and how do we do that in a way that is sustainable for ourselves is, is the really interesting challenge for me so this is an example and you'll all be sitting here thinking gosh isn't that a helpful and useful looking diagram and um, uh, but this is an example of something we, we did in the library last year and uh, all credit to uh, Catherine Unsworth who, who used to work at, at Answers at Monash's library now working for ANS where we were having conversations with researchers and it became clear to us that most researchers didn't really understand the storage options available to them within the university and that there was no single place to, to, to point people to and say if you're going to store your research data in particular circumstances particular conditions this is what you should do there were lots of little answers scattered around the university and so we started a conversation and and, uh, and Catherine did a lot of chasing of well what is the actual answer to that question where is the data going to be where are the places the university wants to put it where can we advise people and this was an early attempt at trying to solve that question and as you can tell it's not terribly user-friendly but it was an interesting example of trying to uh, to map it what we ended up with was was this document this is a one-page document as you can see and it combines some of that stuff I've been talking about so it combines here are the things that we do at Monash that, uh, do, that, um, that you might need to know about so it's advertising the services that we offer it advertises where you can get them from it 
tries to take you to the reference questions in the top of thinking what are you working with, what are you going to do with it, what do you expect to do with it and so on and it also says there are times where you need to go and talk to an expert and it might be someone from our eSolutions which is our ITS area or it might be um, someone in the library but we're trying to visualize something that will allow us to do that and we're also acknowledging the fact that we need to put this out on the web because not everyone's ever going to come and ask us these questions. You need to put the questions where people are going to discover them. So I thought I'd just finish with a couple of comments on where things are going. Um, this is um, from uh, the Association of College and Research Libraries in the US, their environmental scan of where, uh, where libraries are going uh, over the next uh, few years. Um, the link is there if you're interested and this isn't all of the things, that the, all the trends or the headings but these are ones that I thought were of particular interest in the research data space and thinking about the skills that libraries are going to need or the areas that we're going to need to be expert in or understand in order to, to advise researchers going forward and to work with researchers going forward. Um, I don't have time to go into all these in great depth, it's a really interesting uh, document um, but you know, just pulling out the fact that research data services are a big thing. Digital humanities are big things. Publication are big things. These are the, you know, this is where our role is is moving, and that raises really big and interesting challenges for us uh, as data librarians. Um, one is the challenge of learning new things, and to moving into new areas in a sustainable way. Um, it's a real, you know, libraries do lots of stuff. Um, there's lots of things going on. Um, we're not all going to get millions of new dollars to employ lots of new staff to do these things. How do we sustain this, this, these new services? You know, projects are great, and funding is lovely. Um, and funding isn't forever though. How do we actually take these forward into, into, a, into, um, into a service or a way of thinking that works forever? And what do we have to give up for that to happen? How do we actually decide, well, these are things that we might have always done and that we value at some level, but we can't do anymore. Um, and what are those things and where do they free up resources to do new things. And as I said before, there's a real ongoing challenge in terms of us being taken seriously. Some academics, some researchers think, oh, library, great, love to work with them, fantastic. Some of them think, library, yeah, nothing to do with me. Um, they're there to support undergraduates by putting somewhere, the, putting the textbook somewhere. So continuing to develop our roles, continue to be shown that we understand not only this challenges in abstract, but the challenges that the researchers face and the challenges in the researchers' way of doing things, I think is a really uh, a really interesting one. And you know, Kathy and Philip have both talked a lot about the importance of communication, the importance of of talking and listening and you know we're getting out there and, and that for me is a is a critical part of what we need to do going forward. And that's my email address if anyone wants to send anything that we don't discuss here later on. But um, at that point, I'll hand back over to you, Jerry. Oh, thanks, David. Another fantastic presentation and, and from perhaps a slightly different perspective in someone in a senior management role. So thank, thanks, David. And well, I'll wrap it up there for today. Thank you again, particularly to our presenters. Three wonderful presentations. So thank you to... Uh, Kathy and Philippa and David for your time and for your insights today. So thank you all and hope to see you again at another ANS event shortly. Thank you.